Hi everyone, uh, my name's Steph and this is a walkthrough tutorial on how to design 3D printable Voronoi arm casts for broken bones. So this is just a like a theoretical concept. It's not something that's actually been tested and medically proven. So this is only for say, for example, startup companies or the adventurous uh, person who might have a repetitive strain wrist injury or something like that to have a bit of a go at. Um, this was a project that I did in collaboration with my local hospital. I wanted to see if it could be done and I went ahead and did it. Um, it didn't end up getting used, of course, because um, stuff like this really needs to be driven by a, a real startup company that you know has some drive behind it to actually make it go ahead and happen. But rather than the project getting shelved, I made it an instructable um, up on instructables.com, which many of you have been looking at, and I think it's pretty awesome. But I've had quite a few questions, which is why I've gone ahead and put together this video so that you can see a bit of the behind the scenes action as to how it actually comes together. I understand that Rhino can be pretty full on when you jump into it for the first time. There's a lot of stuff here um, that is not quite as intuitive to the average user of 3D modeling software. Um, so I'll be doing this walkthrough to give you guys a bit of an idea of um, the step-by-step -step process and how it looks from the software end of things. Um, so this tutorial assumes that you've already done the bit in Mesh Mixer where you go ahead and you've taken your 3D scan of the person's arm and you've cleaned it up. So you've used the Mesh Mixer brushes to smooth out any uh, little bumps or areas that don't look too good. Um, and you've also cut away the thumb and the fingers. You only want to have the areas left that you want a cast to build up from. Uh, if that makes sense. Um, so that's how we'll be doing um, tutorial today. Okay, so let's jump into it. So um, sometimes when I import 3D scans, like they turn out to be 10 times smaller, which is pretty frustrating. So um, I'm using the ScanX software with my PrimeSense Carmine 1.09 edition. Um, so sometimes I need to scale up my little uh, ARMcast STL, uh, which is this one here, uh, which I have. So if I import uh, this one in here, so this is a, a mesh STL file of our ARM um, 3D scan. And so with this now, the first thing we need to do is use the mesh to nerb function uh, up the top there. So when I'm doing this, uh, you can sort of see that I'm typing it in the command bar, the raw command, um, which is the way I sort of prefer to use Rhino. You can also find all these in the menu, um, but this is the way I prefer to do it. So it says, it sort of prompts you as you go along. So it says, select polygon meshes to convert to nerves. So I'm gonna select this one and then press enter. Um, and so because I've got a bit of a beef master of a computer, hopefully it can handle this one here. Um, so <laughs> yeah, we better save this one as well. Oh, okay, I'll save it as a Rhino 5. Okay, after a significant amount of loading, uh, it finally figured it out and it got it done. So now when we click on this, we can see that uh, we've got a mesh and a poly surface. So the mesh is our old STL file and the poly surface is our new uh, file that we'll be needing to use for our next step. So let's click and drag that one away. Um, and let's get rid of this one over the side here so we don't get confused and use that one instead. So the next step is to make like a bit of an array of rings, a bit like this one here. Uh, if we can see that one. And to do that, we'll need to set up an array of planes. And so the way that I generally like to do that is uh, in Rhino, you've got a few different view planes here. So I'll be selecting my uh, right view plane, if I can refine everything. And I'll go and build it over here. Um, but what I'll need to do is make a whole bunch of um, rectangular planes like these ones here off the side. So I'll go ahead and build one that's large enough for you to fit, um, obviously the whole arm um, cast in there, just roughly, it doesn't need to be a particular size. I'm gonna go back up to my top view, and find the one that I just made and um, make a whole bunch more. So if we just make sure that we've, oh yeah, I'll build that over there. All right, let's put this over here where the scan is, is that big enough? Maybe, maybe not. I'll just make it a touch bigger just in case. And then let's drag that over it. And then what we should be able to do using our top view plane is drag this one right to the back and then just control C, control V your way into building 
like a whole bunch of them across. So, um, these don't need to be accurately spaced. Um, the more you have, the more detail you're going to have in your model. So, I like to make them about this far apart, space-wise. Doesn't have to be super accurate, though. go. So now we have an array of planes across our model. Okay, so the next step is to use the function intersect two sets. Okay, so first we need to select all of the planes at once and then press enter and then select our poly surface as our second option and press enter. Once again, this will take some time to load. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now we can click and drag out our little array of rings that we just made here and we can see that it's a bit not as clean as we would like. So I'm going to go ahead in there and cut away some of these rings that don't make a lot of sense uh, in our model. So I'll get rid of this little one here. Okay, so on these curves, I'm going to use the underscore rebuild option first. Just press OK. That's done a little bit of the work for us. Let's go in here and have a bit of a look. So there are a few curves that are just like floating in there, which aren't too good. And any of these that are a bit silly, I'm just going to delete. We don't need all of these curves all at once. The more we have, the better, but uh, what it's gonna do essentially is loft them all together into one. So if we're missing a few, it doesn't quite matter as much. That got rid of a whole bunch of them, but whatever, we'll be okay. Okay, we're gonna use the function close curve if we are finding more of these. Okay, the next step is to use the loft function. So when we're doing the loft function, we need to make sure that we select all of our curves in order. I don't think it's gonna work if we just select them all and just press enter. Yeah, it doesn't like it. So we'll give it another go, and this time we'll select all of our curves in sequence, which is a bit of a pain, but it's just the way Rhino likes it to be done. Hey, there we go. Okay, we have our rebuilt mesh right here. Okay, so before we go ahead and do the next bit, we'll need to do a little bit more action on this one. So when we do the next step, it's going to essentially offset um, a Verono mesh on this, and we don't want it to be covering up the thumb area. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another plane in just like that. And I'm going to use this to cut off that extra bit of substance that's still over the thumb there. 
So lucky for us, it's a nice flat area. So I'm going to move this into place. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the surface edit tools. I'm going to be using the, the trim function. So I'll type in trim, select my cutting object as the plane, and then click on that bit there to get rid of it. And then we can just press enter, delete this plane here, and now we've got a nice good starting point for our Bruno mesh. Now depending on how you want to build this as well, like I usually like to make the cast in two halves so it comes around, usually where like it's in half along like this direction of your arm. But you can choose obviously wherever you want the joins to be. So if you want, like I've seen some pretty cool cast companies that do like a wraparound join, um, which I think is pretty cool, which you'll be able to do in here as well. Um, but just for today, I'm just going to use uh, the plane function again and just cut it along its midsection. Okay, so that's, uh, that's an all right halfway cut there. So I'm going to use the split function um, where I'm going to click on the model, press enter and select this as the cutting object. Okay, so now I should be able to delete that plane and move this one away from the other one there. So now we have our cleaned and prepared, ready to go, um, bit of poly surface there, ready for the grasshopper plugin. So I'm going to boot up the grasshopper plugin now just by typing in grasshopper into the command prompt there. Um, so grasshopper is an algorithmic modeling platform essentially. And so you'll be able to download uh, this particular file from uh, the instructable. And in here, you'll see exactly what it looks like. Um, so hopefully this computer has all of the bits and pieces that we need. Okay, so assuming that it works, what we need to do is go to the first bit of this model here, right click on that, and then go set one B rep. And we're going to click on the model we just made there. And then hopefully when we go back here, you should see an example of what it looks like. Oops. Okay, so there we go. So that doesn't look too good, it's on the inside there. So remember, this is like an exact model of what the arm should look like. So uh, in this case, sometimes it ends up on the inside, sometimes it ends up on the outside. What we'll do is we'll cancel grasshopper for the moment. And we've got to go ahead and offset our mesh so that it ends up to be like, rather than sitting through the skin, sitting on top of the skin. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. So we're going to offset surf, which is surface. So we'll select that one there. And then uh, how far off do we want it? Usually I make it about two. Okay, there we go. So that's the mesh we want to be using now instead. So this time I will set one VREP as the outer surface there. I'm going to get rid of this inner surface because it's getting confused. 
So I've got a B rep. Okay, so that's a little bit better there. So if you're feeling super adventurous at this point, uh, what you can be doing is, so I might just do a two screen view, um, but there's some settings in here that you can be having a bit of a muck around with. So like in here, there's some thicken um, numbers that you can have a play with. So that's set at number three at the moment for uh, the thicken area there. But if you wanted to change that to six, that actually did that commit. Okay, go six and then commit changes. You might be able to see that it's looking a lot thicker now. So there's bits and pieces in here that you can be adjusting to make it stronger, make the holes bigger or smaller, depending on what you're after. All those kinds of things that you know you can be doing to prototype. Okay, commit changes. And then once we're happy with it, we can select the whole lot and then press no, select some of it and then press bake. Okay, so now we have a finished baked cast. So here it is here. Um, you can just pull it out from that model and there it is. Uh, so there's a few little bits and pieces that you can sort of stick around and fix up if you want to, like this bit here is a bit strange. Um, but you can at this point choose to add on like um, little slots for like Velcro fasteners if you prefer to um, wear it in that way. Um, but that's pretty much it. All you need to do from here is um, 3D print your model. So to export it, you just highlight that model, go up to File, Export Selected, and then you should be able to save it as an STL file. So generally when I print these out, um, I tend to try and stand them upright and print them up that way. But of course, you know, tall, long, skinny things can uh, wobble and fall off. So I generally um, print it out with some kind of a raft. Don't try and print it with support structures because they'll be a pain to clean out and there'll be a little bit like the, the roughage left over from it is, is going to be a bit painful on the skin as well. Um, but yeah, there you go. So this tutorial is, um, you know, it's just an indicative way of having a go at this. Uh, if you do want to choose to go ahead and make these, please make sure that you take them into your doctor or medical professional and get their opinion um, before you go ahead and start using these full time. And I'm certainly not a rhino expert anyway, so uh, there's potentially faster or easier ways to go about doing this, which I'm hoping that some of you will hopefully get inspired by some of this and go and do things better. Um, if any more questions you have, feel free to send me an email, put a comment up. I'm happy to take them. Uh, all the best with this project anyway, and have a good one. Thanks.